Real AI trend or hype? That is the question. If you look at all of the AI news people, their content is always like, biggest news ever, massive week for AI, the most important news of this year. Sure, it is big news, but is it actually something that's worth the time and the energy to dive deep into and to keep up with? Don't get me wrong, you may genuinely love keeping up with the coolest new things, which by all means, keep doing that. But for a lot of people like myself, it's kind of stressful trying to keep up with everything. So in this video, we're gonna figure out what are the trends most worth keeping up with and identify the top job or business opportunities within these trends. Thank you TenWeb for sponsoring a portion of this video. I'll show you how you can use it to make a website in literally one minute. Good morning. Your plans for today are to check in on the ads you're running for your t-shirt business, track orders, address questions, then make new designs and post them on your store. But I've gone ahead and actually did all of these for you so you're all good for the day. What would you like for breakfast? Tea. Earl Grey. Hot. And a banana. Sounds good. Here you go. Your friend Sally left you a video message telling you she wants to get a divorce. Use my avatar clone to video message her back expressing my condolences. I'm so sorry to hear that, Sally. What are you thinking of doing next? Did you think of getting a divorce lawyer yet? Done. Would you like to watch a movie now? Sure, I'd like to watch a documentary on woolly mammoths. One moment. Okay, I generated an 80-minute documentary about woolly mammoths. Enjoy. Yeah, no. At least, not yet. This is the hype cycle of emerging technologies graph. And this is where generative AI fits in, at the peak of inflated expectations, right about to slip into the trough of disillusionment. Maybe one day we'll get to live in the world like those sci-fi movies, although hopefully not the dystopian ones. We'll come back to this graph later. But for now, what we'll be looking forward to for the next couple of years is more in line with the sentence from a recent blog article from IBM. Generative AI offers unique opportunities and solutions, but it will not be for everything or everyone. Not as sexy, right? It's cool, but not too cool. Microsoft Copilot for individuals came out in February of 2024. Prior to Copilot, say if I need to do a report advising a startup about whether they should go with opportunity A or opportunity B, normally I would have to open up Excel and spend at least a couple hours cleaning things up, fiddling around with it, making some graphs. Then I have to put everything into a PowerPoint, which unfortunately for me, it takes me like five hours to do because I suck at making PowerPoints. Now these days though, with Copilot, I can open up Excel and do some simple analyses just by prompting Excel of what I want. It's definitely not perfect, but I can do simple things like join tables together, remove empty rows, get some summary statistics, and generate some simple graphs. It definitely saves me at least an hour or so, because despite having a computer science degree and being a data scientist for two years at Meta, the embarrassing truth is I'm still not very good at using Excel, because I usually just default to using Python or SQL. But you know, business people like their spreadsheets. So anyways, now I need to transfer everything into PowerPoint, and it saves me at least two to three hours. You can use Microsoft Copilot and prompt PowerPoint to come up with the entire slide deck done in a beautiful fashion and pictures. Yeah, you gotta tweak it a little bit and add certain things, change the graphs and things like that, but genuinely it saves me so much time. And people are like, wow, your PowerPoint slides are so beautiful. For me, it's honestly so worth it for the $20 a month that I pay. And I know it's just gonna get better and better over time. I know some people are gonna say in the comments right now, Tina, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's overhyped. I get it, I get it, but for me, it is worth it. Got my music controls. If I go to the left, I can go back. Startups that are creating things like the Humane Pin and the Rabbit R1 are the ones aiming for that cool futuristic world. A world in which the founder of the R1 describes as no longer needing your phone, no longer needing apps. You can simply use your voice to directly interact with the device, to request an Uber, order takeout, translate conversations in real time. And the Humane Pin even has this cool holographic way for you to interact and type things. It totally makes sense how the Rabbit R1 sold out within minutes of its launch. But tools like Microsoft Copilot are the ones that you'll be realistically seeing gaining widespread adoption. Moving forward into 2024, you'll be seeing more products like Copilot, AI being integrated into already existing products, or very specific niche use cases, which you may not even notice unless you're actively looking for it, but they will be useful for most people by increasing their productivity, enabling people to do things like draw even though they're not very good at drawing, and make things a lot cheaper so more people have access to it. This is called vertical AI integration. I'll go into more more detail about this later in the video. But for now, I just want to emphasize that even though vertical AI integration doesn't sound sexy, it's actually really remarkable, even more remarkable than those cool AI 
AI gadgets and flashy software. In particular, there are three industries that experts say will have a lot of development because of AI. The first one is in healthcare. There's already new medicines and drugs that have been developed with the help of AI, molecules that we would never have thought of ourselves. With AI, a lot of data that's being stored in a variety of different places, new methods for personalized healthcare, and insights into diseases that we've been trying to solve for a long, long time. The second industry is sustainability. Experts predict that we'll be able to see new AI-aided ways to come up with better solutions for this problem we'll be solving for decades, climate change and sustainability. They'll be both in terms of developing technology and in policymaking and global politics. The third is the domain of education. Imagine a world where everybody has their own personalized tutor. Actually, Khan Academy has already built one. This will democratize education where people who would never have gotten the chance to receive a good education now can at very low cost. It would also allow teachers to cater more towards different people's learning styles. For example, some people learn better through text, some people learn better through audio, some people learn better through videos. This will also be a huge game changer for people who struggle with disabilities and learning problems. From a teacher's perspective, this will also streamline so many of the things like grading and things like that in order to spend more of that time interacting with their students. It also allows teachers to share knowledge with each other and collectively come up with better curriculums and better teaching methods. These are just some examples and there are many many other industries that will benefit greatly from the developments of AI. Let me know in the comments what industry you're in and how can you see AI transforming something or solving a problem within your industry. One example of vertical AI integration that massively boosts productivity is in creating websites. I'll show you how to do it in literally one minute using TenWeb, who is the sponsor of today's video. All right, we'll start with generate your website, no credit card required. We can create a new website using AI. And by the way, TenWeb creates a fully functional WordPress website. Okay, so I want to create an informational website. The website I want to create today is a blog in which I'm actually going to make our first blog post based upon this video of AI trends. So under business type, I'm going to find education. So education blog, next. English blog name, let's call it how to AI. Describe your blog. Um, a blog that talks about how to use AI, AI trends, the latest AI products, AI news. Next. So title of the blog, let's call it AI trends in 2024. For the blog post description, I wrote down the trends that are covered within this video. So we have trend one was the integration of AI and everyday products to increase productivity, such as Microsoft Copilot. I'm not gonna go into detail about the other trends yet, so keep watching the video, but this is the kind of description that I'm using. And under categories, we can write AI trends. So finalize, your website is waiting for you. So we will sign up with Google and it is generating my personalized AI website. And we have our website. And by the way, TenWeb is a company that literally got sponsored by Andrew Ning, who is the creator of Coursera and just kind of like the world leader in AI. Anyways, let's go look at our website. All right, how to AI. AI and education, AI trends, website builder, AI history, and AI for small businesses. So we have AI trends in 2024, and then it features these different blog posts that we have. So it auto filled some of these and editors picks as well. You can subscribe to the newsletter, AI for small businesses. This is, this is crazy, isn't it? Like that's it, that's literally it. That's all I put. When you click into a tab like AI trends, for example, you can look at AI trends in 2024. And it describes all the AI trends that I talked about. Since this website is a fully functional WordPress website, you have access to all of the things that you have on WordPress, you can also edit the website really easily. Um, no coding required at all. You can try Tenweb Pro for seven days for free. And in terms of pricing, we have the AI Starter, AI Premium, and AI Ultimate. The AI Starter is fine for simple websites, but I would recommend AI Premium so that you can have a more professional website. You don't need to pay anything right now and only be charged seven days later. You don't need to worry about things like hosting, backup, security, scalability, and domain integration. While it's processing, I want to say that something really cool about TenWeb, it's actually completely open source as well. So you can also customize and build on top of it if you want to. And yeah, you can edit things around and tweak it completely just drag and drop after you're happy with it you can save and publish and there you go 
your website is published. You can get started using Tenweb using this link over here, also linked in description. If you go through my link, you will also get a discount. All right, thank you Tenweb for sponsoring this portion of the video and back to the video. Artificial intelligence is going to kill us all. There's something called shadow AI, and I'll go into this in just a tiny bit. But first, I want to address the magnitude of the increasingly important trend of safety and privacy. On October 30th, the Biden administration issued a very comprehensive executive order detailing 150 requirements for the use of AI in federal agencies. This is just months after AI developer companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, Google voluntarily gave the commitment to adhere to certain guardrails for trust and security. This includes having to share safety results to the government before releasing it to the public and meeting certain privacy and security guidelines within 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days of release of new AI developments. I just want to emphasize that the government, the government had made these moves within months, which by federal government standards is like unprecedentedly fast. That's how important safety and privacy are. But given that it's also the government, we shall see how all of this pans out, especially in election year. But even right now, businesses are facing huge problems in terms of privacy and security. Many notable companies just straight out banned the usage of AI. And these are like big companies, also tech companies, including Apple, Amazon, Verizon, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, and essentially all the other banks out there too. So this all sounds good in theory, but there's the problem of shadow AI. Shadow AI refers to the unofficial personal use of AI in the workplace by employees. Basically using AI tools like ChatGPT in order to get answers faster, to do things more quickly, um, even though that it is banned in the company. In a study by Ernst & Young, 90% of respondents say that they do use AI at work. Even the people who worked at companies which technically banned the usage. Clearly, shadow AI is a huge problem. And clearly, you're not gonna be able to stop people from using AI. It's essentially telling students back in the day to not use Wikipedia, except this is like worse with worse consequences if you know AI hallucinates or something and then suddenly you lost like $10 billion, not great. Anyways, another increasingly more worrisome trend or like sub-trend within privacy and security is the issue of copyright. There's a lot of debate on the usage of copyrighted material in order to train AI models, especially with those like AI models that are closed source, it's kind of hard to tell what it uses and what it doesn't use, right? There's been a series of lawsuits like the Writers Guild, very prominent celebrities, even the New York Times that have sued companies like OpenAI and Microsoft for the alleged usage of their own copyrighted material. It is definitely a very hotly debated topic, but collectively, let's just call it the pushback trends towards generative AI, addressing the concerns about security, privacy, and copyright. There is a lot of opportunities in this space because there just isn't very good solutions right now. In particular, I would recommend looking into open source models and local models that some individuals and companies alike are turning to as opposed to the big AI closed source models from OpenAI and Google. In order to adapt these open source models towards your needs, um, definitely also look into things like like fine tuning and rag. These are just some of the emerging solutions to address the shadow AI issue. During the gold rush, cell shovels. Allegedly, this is a quote that comes from Mark Twain in reference to the California gold rush in the 1800s. There's a lot of wisdom in this line. In this case, the gold rush is the AI rush and the people selling the shovels are the people who are directly working on improving and building AI for the AI enthusiasts to use. These include roles like AI researchers, AI engineers, data analysts, data scientists, ML ops. This study by the World Economics Forum already shows that there's gonna be significant increases in these type of support roles. I'm not going to comment too much more like is it going to end up like the gold rush in which people are disappointed or is it going to be like a spectacular AI world in the future but it's undeniable that this trend is happening. These are people who are building the tools of the future. Don't worry if you also want to sell the shovels you don't necessarily have to become like an AI engineer or like a super technical person. Remember the term vertical AI integration that I talked about earlier? So many companies are looking to integrate AI into their businesses but they don't know how to do so. so there's a lot of opportunities to help companies do so. Like I said, this can be like full-blown technical roles like AI or ML engineers. But these days, there's also a lot of like no-code and low-code tools that can help you do this as well. For example, I recently did a consulting gig for a high school in which they wanted me to help them implement a bot that can help teachers grade more quickly. We ended up using a coding solution, but there was a lot of ways that we could have implemented this with no-code and low-code tools as well. Let me know in the comments if you also like me to go into more like low code and no code tools in addition to like the more codey stuff that I talk about. I'm not sure what's the general coding level of the people who are going to be watching this video.
Artificial intelligence future is now. All right, coming back to this graph here of the hype cycle for emerging technologies. Over time, we'll inch our way into the valley of disillusionment, but as new innovations happen and AI trends keep developing, we'll slowly inch out of it as well. It's a future where I think anybody would think it's very hard to predict what it's going to look like. But there are some things that we should pay attention to to kind of like start seeing what's going to be happening in the future. In the past decade or so, there's been this global technology trend in which a lot of new technologies are developed in the United States. But the technology actually gets adopted faster in developing countries like China and India. A recent article that came out on the Economics Time India Times had this title, India highest among countries to have actively deployed AI, IBM research. It then says the IBM Global AI Adoption Index found that 74% of those Indian enterprises are already working with AI, having accelerated their investment in AI in the past 24 months. It seems like this is happening again. Things were created in the US and then it's getting widely adopted in developing countries like India. So I'm not saying that the future is going to be China or going to be India, but it is interesting to think about and probably worth paying attention to these global AI trends and adoptions. Let me know in the comments if you live in a developing country and maybe you come to the US or North America and you were kind of surprised because the adoption of technology in your country is actually more widespread than where it came from first, which is the US. All right. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video or live stream.